Welcome to this afternoon's sessions on uh, the structural foundations of inequality. Uh, I'll present one paper, then Marcela Slava comes, and then finally Hernando Zuleta. All of us are from the Department of Economics here at the Universidad de los Andes, and this is sponsored by, by the SEDE. Uh, so this is the first paper, uh, it's, it's jointly uh, with my co-authors David Montoya, Andres Álvarez, y Hernando Zuleta, who will present the third paper. And it's about uh, the COVID crisis and the role of the informal sector, both in the crisis and in the recovery. So we know that employment in developing countries has a big component of informality, and informality has two roles. On the one hand, informality makes the income of the workers more fragile to business cycles. So when they, whenever there is a crisis, uh, these informal workers, they, don't, they, they cannot resort uh, to the social nets, to, and, and so it's more difficult for them to smooth consumption, on opposite to the formal workers. But although informality has like a bad, it, it's usually thought as a bad characteristic of the economy, it's also true that informality, uh, the informal labor market is more flexible than the formal one. And therefore, it can absorb a part of the destruction of formal jobs after a negative shock. So whenever there is a huge crisis like the COVID one, usually there is a lot of formal employment that gets destroyed and usually people uh, have access to more informal jobs because it's a more flexible market. So that's the idea. So in general, informality is a, is a bad thing for the economy, but in the short run, it could work as a cushion to a smooth, a, a smooth this type of crisis. That's the idea. Uh, so that's the usual story on economic crisis, but the COVID crisis is a little bit different. Why? Basically because the informal sector has a higher risk of infection. And that has been documented in several studies, but, es but especially in one study that was, uh, that was made here in Los Andes, directed by, by Rachid Lajaj and the Raquel, the, the, la rectora, she, she participated also, also Ignacio Sarmiento, there were several people participating in this study, and they showed that uh, effectively people that work in informal jobs had a higher risk of contagion. So that potentially lead to different consequences uh, when there is informality in this type of crisis. That's the idea. So we want, what we want to do here is to quantify the role of the informal sector, okay? So here first I want to show you a picture. Uh, so the, the title is whether, whether the informal sector was a, a cushion, as I show you, it could, it could happen in, in, the, in normal crisis, or it was an amplifier of, of this crisis. And the answer is both. It was an amplifier of the crisis at the beginning of the pandemic, but then it helped as a cushion for the recovery. That's the idea. So here in this, in this, in this graph, you could see that the yellow line is the informality, the number of informal workers, and, uh, and the green, bluish line is formality. So you could see that more uh, jobs were lost of, from the informal sector than from the formal sector. But then after September, more or less, uh, the informal sector reacted more quickly and it, it, led, the, it led the recovery from the crisis. That's the idea. So it's the, the, the yellow line is above the blue line at the end, at the end of the year. That's, so that's how you could see it could, it could work as an, as, a, as an amplifier at the beginning, but then it was the usual cushion of the crisis. So we want to, to understand why this is happening, and also we want to understand uh, what policies are more effective to smooth the, the crisis. That's the, idea of the, that's the idea of the paper. So to, to answer that, we propose an SIR model, that's an epidemiological model, where you have a bunch of people that could get infected, uh, and some of them unfortunately die, and others recover. And we want to see the effect of, the, of that epidemiological uh, dynamic in the economy. That's, that's the idea. So 
we have this epidemiological model that has formal and informal markets. Uh, we have agents that derive utility from formal and informal consumption. They substitute, uh, they, they, imperfectly, they are imperfectly substitutes, and they provide an indivisible unit of labor. So they could, that labor could be used to the formal market, to the formal, to, for formal employment, for informal employment, or they could be unemployed. And each of these agents are born with a productivity. So what is going to happen is that uh, more productive households, they go to the formal sectors, and uh, the more improductive households, they have, to, they, they have to choose between unemployment or informality. Here, unemployment will look also like inactivity. Now, the twist here is that there is the, epidemi the epidemiological block of the model. Here, you will have a risk of contagion, a, ri a risk of getting the COVID. This risk of contagion is higher the more the agents consume and the more the agent works, work, okay? So if I have more transactions in the, with the markets, well, there is a higher chance that I get infected. But that chance of getting infected is higher uh, when, you, when those activities take place in the informal sector. Okay, and then we are going to calibrate those numbers with, this, with the study that I just mentioned of, of that they directed Rashid. And it's also higher, the risk of contagion is also higher the greater the number of infected agents because it's more likely that you will have a transaction with one of these infected agents. That's the idea. We also have a formal firm that is subject to a minimum wage and that has to pay payroll taxes and also has to pay hiring costs. Because, because it's too costly to hire formal workers, they will only hire uh, high productivity workers. That's the area. The remaining workers, they have to decide whether to be unemployed or uh, having, working in the informal sector by their own. Basically, they are self-employed. Uh, then we calibrate the model to the Colombia, to Colombian and Peruvian economies, basically because we want to see the effect of a more flexible market. As I will show you the calibration, the Peruvian, mar the Peruvian economy is, mo is more flexible in the, formal, in the formal market, and that could help for a quicker recovery. And then we simulate the economic and the epidemiological effect of several policies. Among them is targeted and non-targeted transfers, so basically universal basic income or targeted transfers to, to, to the poorest, which here would be the unemployed and the, and the informal workers. General and selective lockdowns. So you could have general lockdowns, like we had at the beginning, where almost all the economy shut down, or we propose some selective lockdowns which are targeted to the informal sector. I know this is difficult. This is kind of saying, well, the informal sector has to shut down, whereas the formal workers, they can, they can, they, they can still work. Well, that's difficult to implement. But here in Bogota, we had something similar by restricting, by having lockdowns by uh, neighborhoods. And so that's kind of the, the idea we have behind these selective lockdowns. And we will show that that's the best way of doing these lockdowns, uh, because you you decrease the contagion more effectively and you don't affect that much the economy. And also we want to simulate what happens when you have lower payroll taxes, which is the case of, of the Peruvian economy. So those are the three policies that we want to model. Here is the calibration of the model. So as I told you, we have households, we have a formal firm, we have the epidemiological block, uh, and, and, and so when we mix, we have, when we mix all, 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 all that, uh, all those blocks, we have all these parameters. Basically, I want, to pay, I, I want you to pay attention to a few of them. Uh, the gamma sub F, which is the formal good weight in the consumption aggregator, you could see that it's higher, it's 1.2 1, 1 for Colombia, 0 0.8 uh, for Peru and is the opposite for the informal consumption. Basically, what we are trying to, to get, uh, what we are trying to get here is, is we, we want to replicate the idea that the Peruvian, economy, the Peruvian households tend to buy 
goods more in the informal markets. They rely more, for example, to these to these markets that we have. We have several of those, but it's uh, Peru had one one argument is that Peruvians like to eat uh, like more f uh, fresh food, and that's why they resort to these informal markets. Uh, so when you when you examine like the the typical consumption bundle in the Peruvian economies, well, they have much more uh, goods that are bought from the informal markets. Uh, so that's what we want to, to, to reflect with those numbers. The other number that is interesting is that the hourly minimum wage relative to the median hourly informal wage is higher for the Colombian market, labor market. So here we have a relatively higher minimum wage of the formal sector. That has implications for flexibility of the formal market. And also, we pay much more payroll taxes here in Colombia. So basically, this is, this is telling us uh, about the inflexibility of the, of the Colombian labor market. But on the other hand, you have more informality on the Peruvian economy. So why do, does the Peruvian economy, uh, why do they have more informality? Basically, because they have a lower productivity a lower distribution of productivity. So even though they have a more flexible labor market, well, they have more informality, and they, that will have consequences for the, for the infected people. That's what we want. And, and the rest of the parameter of, of contagion is exactly the same for, the, for both economies. So now what we want to do is to, uh, I'm gonna show you the effects of, of our model compared to the, to the, to the usual model of the SIR uh, combined with this economic, uh, with this, with this economic model, macroeconomic models, but without having a differential risk between the formal and the informal sector. So here, basically, the blue line is what a usual model will tell you, and the the black line is what our model will will tell you when you have a differential risk between the formal and the informal sector. And as you can see. In our model, people will get more infected. So basically, you have in, in all the models that are applied to the developed countries, you will have one risk of contagion. And here we have two risk of contagion. Uh, one for the formal sector that is lower than the usual one, and one for the informal sector that is bigger than the usual one. So basically, we are doing a spread here of the, of the, of the risk of contagion. And what you can see is that at the end, you will have more infected people and you will have more diseased people. Also, what you would see is that households would substitute informal for formal consumption to decrease the risk of contagion in our model. And this substitution ge generates a bigger dip in the informal sector that generates a bigger dip in total consumption. So here, informal sector goes down much more than the formal sector, and at the end, the aggregate effect is that consumption goes much lower than the usual models. Uh, I realize now I have, that I had this here. In terms of employment, uh, what you would see is that informal employment, again, decreases us at a faster pace than formal employment, and that increases overall unemployment. That's the other thing. And when you do the policy experiments, I'm going to here present you a summary because we have a, a very, very few time. So we have this is, this is a, a basic summary. When you have lump sum transfers, so basically universal basic income, do we have that the, the greater the transfers, the less severe the pandemic. So you will have less diseased people, but you will have a deeper recession, okay? Now, these universal transfers, they will encourage formal employment because people will uh, will substitute informal for formal uh, for formal consumption because it has a lower risk of contagion, uh, and so formal employment will increase relatively to the informal sec to the informal employment. But if you target those lump sum transfers, the effect on formal employment depends on the size of the transfer. If transfers are the size of what we did here in, in Colombia, and you and you multiply by two those transfers, you will have a lower decrease in formal employment. That's good. But you, if you keep increasing the amount of transfers, the formal employment will start to increase. 
So it has this non-monotonic effect uh, on, on, on formal employment, the amount of transfers when they are targeted to the poorest people, which is here in this model to unemployed and informal workers. What happens with the lockdown? Well, a lockdown is useful at the beginning of the pandemic because still contagion is very low and, and people will still have the usual activity in, in a model without, without risk of contagion. So lockdowns are useful to slow, uh, to slow down the, uh, the speed of contagion at the beginning, but in the peak of the, of the pandemic, Basically, with, with lockdown or without lockdown, the amount of infected people is exactly the same. So, lockdowns are useful. Lockdowns are useful at the beginning of the pandemic, but the cost of that is that it will hurt formality permanently. Why? Basically, because it will destroy jobs at the beginning, much more jobs that we, we should destroy. And then because of the hiring cost of the formal sector, well, the, the formal employment will recover very slowly. Okay, that's the effect of a, of, a, of a general lockdown. On the other hand, a selective lockdown to, the informal, to, informal, to, to informal employment would be more efficient in reducing deaths, basically because there is a higher risk of contagion there, and will encourage formality. So that's a better, that's a better option. Also, the targeted lump sum transfers will be a better option because it's less costly, uh, it's, it's, it's less costly, basically, and have a similar effect, a similar epidemiological effect. Now, but what is a lockdown? <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to, to, to have numbers on the lockdown, so what we did was to calibrate the lockdown to match the formal employment creation. And this number would be different for each month. Why? Because in each month we, we started to ease the general lockdown after a few months of the, of the pandemic. So we wanted to capture that and we did it to, uh, and we chose those, those numbers to replicate the formal employment creation. Uh, the model does a good job on replicating the observed epidemiological results and it also replicates quite well the informal, the, the creation of informal employment. These are basically the results that we are having. What happens if you would have a uh, duplicate the transfers? What happens with uh, if you had a selective lockdown and not a general lockdown? And in general, what you would see is that uh, this, this, this would be the third, the third line would be the scenario that we, we, that we had effectively here. Why? Because we have a general lockdown and we have Lump sum, sorry, the fourth line, because we had targeted lump sum transfers and a general lockdown. And it would be the, the fact we, we cannot replicate aggregate consumption. Uh, consumption is, goes down much more than what we observed in the real data, basically because here households cannot smooth consumption. We don't have assets. That's one thing that we could explore in, in the next version. Uh, but you could see that having twice the amount of transfers we, we, would have increase unemployment by a lot. What we, observe, what we observe is that unemployment and inactivity uh, were 34% in the peak of the pandemic. Well, if you had given twice the amount of, of lump sum transfers, uh, that amount of unemployment and inactivity would have been 58%. So having much more transfers would create a, much, a, a higher unemployment, a greater but less fall in aggregate consumption and less diseased people. So you have the, you have the, you have the trade off there. So the, the idea with the transfer is that you, you limit the economic activity and that's good because you decrease the number of deaths, but you have the economic, the, the economic trade off because you lose a lot of output. That's the idea. Uh, when we compare to the Peruvian economy, basically the, 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 the conclusion here is that a more flexible market are more useful for a faster recovery. That's the basic conclusion. I'm gonna, and I'm going to end with this slide. Uh, so basically what we did here was having, considering a higher risk of contagion for the informal sector. And we, we, what we, uh, we show you is that that generates a deeper recession than if you don't have this spread between formal and informal and informal sector. That flexible formal prices and less distorted labor market is the recession. So that's good because you can have a faster, you can have also a faster recovery. And here in Colombia, we have a very inflexible formal market. We could do better then. That lump sum transfers 
reduce the labor supply, that helps to smooth the pandemic, but deepens the recession. If you target them, that lowers the cost and has basically the same epidemiological effects. Lockdowns are only useful at the beginning, and if you target them to informal sector, that reduces output loss and increases the incentives for being a formal worker. So that's basically the, the summary of the paper. Thank you.